Hi, my name is Richard Azariga from Microsoft, and in this video, we're going to look at the new Universal Windows platform for Windows 10 and how we can connect that to Office 365. So one of the great things about the new Universal Windows platform is we're finally realizing our vision of having a build once, run across any device. Um, and when I say any device, any device that runs Windows. So I'm here in a new Universal Windows app project in Visual Studio 2015, and you'll notice that it has a single project. So in the past, if I tried to build a quote unquote universal Windows app, I ended up having a separate project for uh, like a desktop, a separate project for mobile, and then I had a shared project where I tried to put most of my code. Here, it's truly one project that runs on either platform. So I thought I'd show you a finished sample and then we'll look at how we can start one from scratch and actually connect into the Office 365 APIs. So um, first I'll start on the desktop version of this. This is a, a sample that I put out on GitHub and it's just called My Files. And what it does is it connects into your OneDrive for Business and displays the files you have. So at this point it's gonna go off and query to see what files I have. In this case, it's actually already handled uh, the authentication. It's all cached already. And so I can come in here and I can drill down into a different folder and I can even pull up a picture if I wanted to. So if I wanted to pick up this Scott and Tim picture, um, I can go do that. And in the background, this is again querying OneDrive for business and then I can swipe through different images. So, you know, a great experience here on the desktop. Um, this is meant to be very responsive as well. So as I you know, expand it, you can see it fills up the screen. Um, and that's gonna make it very easy to translate into the mobile version. So I'll go ahead and stop this, bring up my mobile device here, and we'll go and we see that I have this My Files Windows 10 running on this mobile device. And you can see in this case, it's gonna go and prompt us. So we'll go ahead and log in here. And you can see here it's it's prompting us that this wants to read and write your files. I'm gonna go ahead and accept that. And now this is gonna go through, um, and we'll talk a little bit about the new authentication mechanisms we're gonna use. So you can see it's kind of doing some interesting things here. Um, but ultimately, it's going to bring back some tokens to my application that are gonna allow me to query for my files. So that's what we should see here next is it should be able to go up and, and pull up all those files that are in my OneDrive for Business, connecting to Office 365. And again, I can drill down into different um, items as I wish. Excellent. Well, let's um, close this off and look at how we actually build one of these. So I'm gonna go to Visual Studio 2015. I'm gonna create a brand new project. And so I'm gonna call this one um, My O365 App. And I'm gonna put this in a delete folder so I can clear it out later. Um, now you can see under Windows, I have this blank universal Windows um, app template that I'm gonna go with here. So we'll go ahead and create this. And again, this is gonna be that new universal app template that's gonna have a single project uh, that targets both desktop, tablets, and even mobile devices that are running Windows 10. So here's my project. I'm basically set up and ready to go. And the mechanism for me to connect into Office 365 is using the connected service wizard. So what I'm gonna do is right click my project and I'm gonna say add connected service. And this is gonna give me a couple of different options here. But what I'm gonna do is select this bottom one, the Office 365 APIs. And then it's gonna walk me through some steps to get connected to those APIs. So I'm gonna put in my tenant ID here that I'm gonna use for this demo. It's gonna say, do you wanna use an existing application or do you want to create a brand new application? In this case, I'm gonna create a brand new application, so we'll say next. And in this case, uh, maybe I wanna work with contacts. So I'm gonna jump over to contacts and we'll just say rewrite contacts. And I'm gonna say finish. So behind the scenes, this is doing a few things. It's actually gonna go off and uh, create an application in Azure AD for us and it's going to go and pull in all of the SDKs that I might wanna work with. So things like ADAL, where I can work with Azure Active Directory, which is gonna be my authentication uh, mechanism. 
and um, some of the SDKs, like you can see there's one here for Outlook Services Client. So all those are available to me that we're going to be able to use as we um, kind of do this demo. Now, one of the interesting things is that when it actually registered the application, if you've ever worked with Azure Active Directory in the past, you probably used something called a web authentication broker. And um, behind the scenes for OAuth, you had this really special looking URI that was your reply URI. And ultimately what that web authentication broker is, is just a, a glorified browser control that is ultimately looking for a callback. So it's gonna just open that browser control, let an OAuth flow occur, and then once the callback finishes, it's gonna look for that finishing and then close that browser control. So in the new um, Windows 10 Universal Apps, we're gonna have a new mechanism for connecting to Azure Active Directory, something called a web account provider. And this is gonna be a lot more flexible for us to um, plug in different providers if we wanted to connect to a number of different types of services. And the other thing that's really unique about this is it's not gonna be so much of like a, a browser control that gets loaded. It's gonna kind of own that login experience a little bit more and I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. So what I'm gonna do is let me go into my main page here and I'm just gonna open up the main page and let's go ahead and maybe wire into the loaded event. So we're gonna do some things when we load and so we'll go ahead and, and add that. So what I wanna do when we load is I wanna immediately go off and get an access token. Um, that's how all of the Office 365 APIs communicate is with access tokens. Now, um, we can once we get that, we can either use that access token with an SDK or we can use it with REST. What I'm gonna do is use it um, with the SDK here, but first let me create a quick, just really simple um, method that we can call to get an access token. So I'm gonna quickly create a uh, private async, um, and this is gonna return a task of type string, because it's gonna re return a access token. And we'll go ahead and resolve this here. And we'll call this get access token for resource. Um, and again, if you've worked with 8Al before, you're probably familiar, when we get access tokens, we get it for a specific resource. So that's what we're gonna pass in. We're gonna tell it what resource we wanna ultimately connect to. So here's where code's gonna get a little bit more specific. I'm gonna start by defining a null token that we're gonna hopefully be able to populate through some code here. Um, at the end, we'll go ahead and return it. But we're gonna use the new web account provider to actually go out and establish a connection to Azure Active Directory. So we'll go ahead and put this web account provider and we'll resolve this. So we're gonna say web account provider equals a new web account. Or actually we're gonna do a web authentication Core manager and we're gonna say on that we're gonna say find oh actually this is static so we'll go ahead and say find account uh, async or find account provider async and inside of this we're gonna pass the authority so that's what it's gonna want is the providers authority and in this case, um, what it really should be is login.microsoftonline.com. Um, I haven't had a lot of success using that right now, I think because some of this is still being completely finalized, but what does work is login.windows.net, which is the old endpoint for, the old authority for Azure Active Directory. So we'll go ahead and use login.windows.net. In the future, that, that will most likely change to what we're currently using, which is login.microsoftonline.com. So with this, the next thing I'm gonna do is set up a web token request, because that's what we want. We want a web token. So we'll say web uh, token request, and we're gonna make that equal to a new web token request. And inside of this, we're gonna provide, we're gonna put in our provider, which is this AAD account. 
um, we're going to need a, a scope. In this case, we're just going to pass string.empty into this. We don't need it for what we're doing. Um, the next thing we need to do is provide the client ID for our application. Now that's actually, when we did add connected service, it actually gets added to the app resources. So if I go to this app.xaml, what you'll see is it's actually in the body here. So you can see I have this client ID. So that's what we're going to go out and grab is this client ID. And you can see it actually has the authority as well, but um, in, in our case, uh, I, as I mentioned, I'm having a little bit of trouble using that one. So we're going to, we'll go ahead and um, do this. So we'll say app.current dot resources and um, the resource that we're going to go after is that um, client ID so we'll go ahead and put that client ID and we'll say to string on it all right the next thing that we need to uh, put in here is how we want to prompt the user so here's the key is what we're going to try to do is prompt um, default so this is going to mean silent um, it's going to allow us to do things silently um, and then if this fails, we'll go and do more of an explicit call to um, make sure they get prompted. So we'll go ahead and just go with the default on this first one. Um, and then we're going to set a few properties on this request. So we're going to say request.properties.add. Uh, and we're going to add the authority here again. So again, we're using the old authority https login.windows.net oh actually I need to put the key in so we have our authority and we're going to add oop, scroll down too much we're going to add one more so we'll do request dot properties dot add and this one is going to be the resource that we're going to connect to so we'll say resource and that's going to equal the resource we pass into this. Again, we're always going to get tokens that are resource specific. Um, at this point, we can actually go and perform our, re our request. So I'm just going to say response equals um, await. And what we're going to call here is um, we're going to use the um, Web Authentication Core Manager again. Core Manager. And we're going to get a token async silent. So that's the important thing here. We're trying it silent at first. And we'll go ahead and in this and put our request. Okay, so once this comes back, because we're awaiting it, we can immediately start checking the success of it. So let's just see if it was successful. So we'll say um, response dot status. And we're gonna see if it was a success. So we'll go down here to success. So if it's the success, we'll go ahead and set our token. So we'll say uh, token, or actually we're, we need to get the token out. So we'll say web token response. And this is gonna be equal to our response dot uh, response data. And we're just gonna grab the first one that comes back. And now we can actually set our token. So we'll say token is equal to web token dot token. So you can see there's actually a few things that come back on the web token. Um, in this case, we really just want the actual access token itself. Um, so that's the first check. But let's do a second check here. And let's see. Let's see if the response dot uh, response status. This time we're going to check to see if it was um, user interaction required. What this is going to say is we weren't able to get the token silently, so we need to kind of force the user to sign in so that we can get a token. So um, we'll go ahead and check for this. And if this is the case, we're going to actually do this entire um, dance one more time. So I'm going to kind of copy and paste everything in here, and we'll just basically reinitialize everything that we already used. Um, but the difference here is we're going to do a few things. Instead of getting this token silent, this time we're just going to um, get a token. So we're going to request token async. Um, the other thing that we're going to do here that's a little bit different is when we redefine our, um, our, our login, we're going to force login. So if you can see here the prompt type was default. We're going to change this. We're going to say force authentication. 
So that should handle what we need to do. So at this point, we should get a token back and we should be able to immediately start using it to get some data. So let's see how we might, might do that in our page load. So let's first set up a, we're gonna need uh, to mark this async as well. Um, let's first get a client. So we're gonna say client equals new and let's use the Outlook services client. So this is using the Office 365 um, SDK. So this is um, a special class that we have when we added connected service. Is it not finding that? Oh, I think it's Outlook services client. There we go. And so the constructor for this is gonna take the services root, which in our case is going to be HTTPS, outlook.office365.com, um, and then we'll say uh, EWS OData. Um, and then finally, it needs our access token function. Um, and so in this case, what we can do is we can define a, an async async call and in here we can simply um, return await get access token for resource and in here we'll pass the resource which is going to be Outlook so we'll say HTTPS outlook.office365.com so um, then we should immediately be able to start um, querying this. And actually, I think this needs to be a URI, so we'll just change that to be a URI. Okay, so I should immediately be able to start getting data here. So let's say um, contacts equals client dot, actually this is gonna be an await as well. So we'll say await client dot me dot contacts dot um, uh, actually, I think I can just get all of them, or at least a paged version of it. Um, yeah, I think that's good. So let's just do contacts and we'll say execute async. Um, and then let's just put another, I'm just going to put a variable here so we can have a breakpoint. All right, so let's um, let's run this. I think we should be good here. Um, I'll, I will put a breakpoint in here in a, in a couple of places. I'm actually going to be able to get all the way to this line because it's actually not going to call the access uh, get access token until I actually um, start trying to use the Outlook Services client. So we'll go ahead and run this. So it's compiling. No real user interface here. Um, like you can certainly go download the samples that I pointed to on GitHub um, that are in the blog as well. Uh, but in this case, we're really looking at how that how easy it is to connect, um, authenticate, and start calling APIs. So at this point, as soon as this loads, I should get pushed out to. So if I step over this here, we'll just do a quick. Um, step over it should immediately prompt me so what you're gonna see here is in the in the dialogue it's gonna bring up this new window so you can see this looks very different from the traditional web authentication broker this is using again that new um, web account provider so I'll go ahead and put my account in here and we'll log in and now when I sign in, it's going to ask me, do you want it to be able to read, write your contacts? I'll say accept. Now it's gonna go through a few additional things here. So it's registering my PC to make sure it complies with company policy. So this has some additional things that we might have if we had some policy in place. I don't at this point. So at this point, um, I should have a spinner. I didn't, but you can see that we've now hit the next breakpoint. So all of that that was going on was this one line of code where we were trying to actually go and get contacts. But now if I look at contacts, so we'll go over here and say contacts.currentpage, what I should see, I have eight contacts that were brought back. And so it's that easy to connect the Office 365 APIs and start working with them. So definitely, you know, pull down Visual Studio 2015, add connected service, and start pulling some Office 365 greatness into your Windows Universal apps with Windows 10.